Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to 2022. Can you believe it? I know we're all glad 2021 is behind us, and I know we're very excited about what the future holds for this new year. Uh, I'm glad you joined us online. We hated that we had to call off the in-person meeting, but we just felt like we had had too many reports of COVID in our membership that it just wouldn't be wise for us to gather. And we wanted to give it just a little more time from the Christmas holiday when so many people were interacting with each other. We believe we'll be back next week. And so I hope you'll be with us next week. But for those who are watching today, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I hope you'll stay with us through the whole service because we believe it'll be a good one. I'm going to be talking about, this is from a couple of years ago, but I'm going to be talking about living better, doing better, kind of seeing 2022, if you want to put it into that term as a, a year that you grow and that you move out of a comfort zone, that you try to experience a little bit more of life maybe than you've experienced before. Well, I'd be remiss if I didn't remind you that we're able to do what we do because of your giving. And if you'd like to give, there's several ways to do it. Uh, probably the easiest way is to go to our website, thevillageatlanta.com slash give. And then you can just have, it'll just take you through the process. It's easy peasy. And uh, we appreciate so much. We had a gift this week uh, that came from out of state that just blew our minds and blessed us so much. So wherever you are, if you think there's value here and you want to give to what we're doing, we appreciate it so much. I want to pray. And then I hope you'll enjoy the message and comment below. Let us know that you're watching. All right. Let me pray. God, thank you for this first Sunday of 2022. Thank you for every person who's watching. And I just pray that you would teach us, open our hearts to new experiences, new uh, avenues of love and grace. And this next year that we're in right now, 2022, would be for all of us a year of, of growth and love and grace and more goodness than we could ever imagine. We know there's going to be sorrows along the way, and we know you're going to be with us along the way every step. But God, we do pray for this big 2022, and we thank you for being with us, and we pray this in Christ's name. Amen. Abraham is a great example in Scripture of someone who chose to move from the place he had been residing, this area called Haran, into a future beyond his wildest dreams. Now, Abram lived a long, long, long time ago. In fact, he lived during a time when the whole world was polytheistic. They thought there were gods, all kinds of gods. And uh, then uh, the Jews, Abraham, and then those that followed became mon monolatrous, which meant that they, they believed there were gods everywhere, but they believed they had one unique God that stayed with them. But they were basically um, localized. They believed that their God just kind of stayed in their land. But Abram gets this vision that God is wanting him to move into a future that he doesn't know anything about, to actually leave everything that he has known as familiar and to move to a place he's never been before. And Abram decides to respond, and that's why he's called the father of our faith. Look on the screen, Genesis 12. This is how it's worded. The Lord said to Abram, now, again, nobody has ever done this. They've always thought, yes, there's many gods. We're monon, um, monon how do you say it, Mon monolatrous. So we, we believe there are many gods, but we believe this. our God just keeps us local. And God says, go from your country, your people, your father's household to the land I'll show you. I'll make you into a great nation, and I'll bless you. I'll make your name great. I'll bless those that bless you, and whoever curses you, I'll curse. And all the people on the earth will be blessed through you. And then the New Testament says this about Abram. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go to a place he would later receive as his inheritance, he obeyed, and he went, even though he did not know where he was going. I want to talk to you today about the journey that you are all on, each one of you. Religion or spirituality, properly understood, is more than just feeling good about where you'll go when you die. 
Sadly, I've been in ministry 40 years. 30 of those years, I thought my job was to help people know where they were going to go when they died. But you know what? When you read the Bible, there is almost nothing said about that. Almost nothing. It's all about the journey we are on now. Jorgen Moltmann, professor emeritus of theology at the University of Tübingen in Germany, one of the most prominent uh, theologians of our generation, said this, the notion that this life is no more than a preparation for life beyond is the theory of a refusal to live. And it's a religious fraud. It really is about what kind of journey you're going to be on. Sometimes life doesn't feel for us like we are actually moving. We feel stuck. There have been many times in my life when I have felt like I was in quicksand, when I felt like my spiritual life was stuck, when I felt like my career was stuck, when I felt like I was in dysfunctional relationships and everything seemed stuck. Have you ever felt stuck? Have you ever felt really stuck? It doesn't have to be a seriously bad place. It's just a stuck place. It happens in our homes. It happens with our jobs. It happens with our friendships. It happens in our churches. Sadly, some people just settle for being stuck. They just think that's life. Uh, They're a little passive, and they kind of tune into the Doris Day song that we may remember we were children. Que sera, 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 whatever will be, will be. The future's not ours to see. Que sera, sera. They think, I can't do anything about it. Some, on the other hand, say, no, I'm just going to medicate myself so I don't have to think about being stuck. And they medicate themselves by drinking too much or uh, smoking too much weed or um, just doing things like that that that, that are going to be hurtful to them. Some do crazy escapist things to help them forget they're stuck. Watch television too much. Facebook too much. Go from relationship to relationship too much. Eat too much. And some just live depressed lives just saying this is it. This is what it is. This is all I, I know. But they could be on a journey of growth and love. And the same God who invited Abram to trust God and walk into a new path is also whispering to us today, trust and walk into a new path. I want us to think today about what it would take for our lives to move from our stuckness. What would it really take for us to move to the next level? If I'm going to kick it in 2019, really kick it, what needs to happen? And if you're going to kick it, what needs to happen? The first thing I want you to get is this. What got you here won't take you there. Think about that just for a moment. What got you here won't take you there. In other words, the things that you've been doing to get to this present place, wonderful, wonderful. Nothing against any of those things. They probably will not be the only things necessary to take you to the next level of your life. Said another way, it's insanity, and you've heard this, it's insanity to think you can keep doing the same things and have different results. The people who are going to struggle are the people who think they know it all. I I believe this is true. The moment you become unteachable is the moment you can unpack your things because you're going to be wherever you are for a long, long, long time. And some people have decided that's okay. They're unteachable, and they're just going to live in their same mess for a long, long time, but you don't have to. Now, we say it's important to feel good about yourself. We sure want you to feel good about yourself. It's important to know you matter to God, and you do. It's important to know your worth is not determined by your performance, and it's not. But the Bible says so much about how we can change in this life. The Bible is a great book about change, real change. Paul said, take off the old cloak and put on a new cloak. Take off the old man, put on the new Paul said, grow up, be mature. Your time for being a baby has passed. Desire an adult diet. Stop eating baby food spiritually. Let your character grow. Let it be known by the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Become real followers of Rabbi Jesus. Walk in his steps. Let me ask you a question. Do you feel like you're growing? I hope you are. I hope you are. I hope you can say, you know what? I look back on where I was 12 months ago, and I feel like I'm really growing. Because you need to be growing. Your mind needs to be opening. You need to be thinking different thoughts. If you're thinking the same thoughts that you thought when you were a a 
16-year-old in church, if that's the litmus test, I just want to keep thinking the same things I thought when I was church at 16, that's not it. You should be growing, maturing, understanding a bigger picture of what God is like. Are you doing things differently? Are you evolving? Are you loving more? Are you serving more? Are you more and more free of anger, and shame, and bitterness? Are you learning to say no to fear and yes to faith? Are you learning those things? It is true what got you here won't get you there. Your results are exactly what your life produced. Those things you have right now are because your life has added up to that right now. To get better results, you have to begin to do things differently. If I'm going to kick it in 2019, what needs to happen? Well, I need to know what got me here won't take me there. But I also need to know this. Not much happens until I get a vision of a bigger, brighter, better future. It starts with us understanding it can be better. It's the story of following God. The prophets used to present this picture to the Jews of life in the kingdom and what it would be like. They used to say the day will come when people will take their weapons of destruction. We would say our guns, our tanks. The prophets would say they would take these swords one day and we'll melt them down and we will make farm tools out of them so we can feed people. We won't want to kill people. That's what they said. This was the scripture. This is beautiful. Isaiah 2, 4 said this. This is talking about that day in God's kingdom. This is what it'll be like. They'll beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation will not take up sword against nation, nor will they train for war anymore. Or as the old spiritual said, study war. They'll study war no more. Jane and I met a guy about a year ago, six months ago. And he goes all over the country, and he talks about gun violence. And people who want to turn in their guns, and they melt them down, and they make garden tools out of them. My wife's brother and her nephew were killed by guns. We have a gun, and she hates it. We have it, but she doesn't want to give it away because she hates it. And you know what we're going to do? We want to have Shane Claiborne come here just because maybe there's somebody else. I'm not saying hunting. I'm not against hunting. I'm not saying anything like that. I'm saying, but just random kind of gun violence. There's something in my wife's heart that says, you know what? I just want to give my gun up so it could be melted as a picture of what could happen one day when our weapons will be turned into farm tools that will produce food for people instead of hurting people. Wouldn't that be beautiful to see something like that? That's what happens, though. A dream has to take place for you to get that idea. That's what the prophets were doing. They were giving people that dream, a dream of people all seated around God's table. Um, It's the same with us. God gives us dreams, and he wants us to have a vision of a better future. I believe this. God would not have put a dream in your heart if he had not already given you everything you need to fulfill it. I think it's there. You need a dream, and without a dream, you're drifting. When you start stop dreaming, you're dying. I, I know I am. When I stop dreaming about a better tomorrow, a better life, better uh, chance to do things God's gifted me to do, when I stop thinking about those things, I feel myself begin to die. We as humans need something we are pushing towards. I believe as long as your horizons are expanding, you'll be emotionally healthy. God made us for growth, that he wants us to grow, and he wants us to stretch, and he wants us to develop. C.S. Lewis said this, you are never too old to set another goal or to dream a new dream. And I'm so grateful for everything in this life that I have, and I try not to take anything for granted, but God has still placed a lot of dreams in my heart, beautiful dreams about the village church. You know, there was a day, I don't know, 10, 15 years ago, when I remember thinking about why is our church so segregated? Why is it white people go to white churches and black people go to black churches? And why are gay people having to live in the closet because the church won't accept them? 
I began to think about what would that be like if everybody could come to church and everybody could be accepted and loved and, and free to be who they are. And over time, that began to happen in this place. But it's unique. It's not everywhere, but it's here. That's a beautiful thing. I, I remember thinking about how our members would be the light of the world. Where often the church doesn't put off much light. It puts off heat, but not light. How people would be drawn to this beautifully diverse, totally inclusive body. How we would genuinely make a difference in the hearts and lives of people. I began to think about those things. And I began to sense they were happening. And they are happening. But it started with a dream. I've had dreams about my own life. How I'm learning to walk in the way that God wired me. I spent many, many years trying to be somebody that I wasn't. Now I want to utilize all the creative gifts and talents I believe God has given me to fill a purpose that that I believe is divine. To see even in a larger way what God meant when God spoke to me and said, Ray, you will be a pastor to people who don't have a pastor. What does that mean? I'm still fleshing that out, but that's the dream. I'm saying all these things because I want you to really think about your life. Is there a dream in there, something stirring, a better you, a a better life, a better potential? Is something in there? It is true, not much happens until you get a vision of a bigger, brighter, and better future. It's important. If I'm going to kick it in 2019, what needs to happen? Another thing, I have to be open to new things. I have to be open to new things if I want my life to grow to its full potential. Isaiah wrote prophetically to Israel while they were mired in desperate captivity. It was terrible. The Babylonians had taken them exile, and they were in a bad place. But God wanted them to stop looking at where they were and start imagining where they could be. And so Isaiah penned these words. Isaiah said this, speaking as if God is saying these things. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I'm making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland or streams in the desert. I got tickled this morning because I was reading this again, and I thought, from my background, we didn't believe God could do a new thing. God didn't do new things. God only did old things. And everything was about backwards. What did God do way back then? But God was saying here, I'm doing a new thing. And God is saying to us, he's doing a new thing. Are you willing to accept and walk in that newness? We can get stuck sometimes in the glory days. How many of you like standing around talking about glory days? Y'all do that sometime? I get with my friends and do that. We talk about football and we talk about how great we were. And we're so much greater in our memory than we really were. And I saw a film back so many years ago. I was at a party and somebody had film of my football team when I was in high school. And I remember how great I was. And y'all, I mean, I thought I was really great. Until I saw this film, and it's like, I don't, want to, I don't want anybody to see the film. I just want to live in here and tell y'all how great I was. I was really great, but the film doesn't show it at all. Some people get stuck in glory days. Um, but for most of us, we're frozen. And I believe there are many here who struggle with what could God's future possibly be for us. Well, God has some new things for you. You ever thought about some of the new things maybe for you, new friends? You ever thought that? I remember several years ago, Jane and I said, you know what? We need some new friends. We need some new friends. And you know what happened? We began to get some new friends, and it has made life more wonderful. We've talked. We have some great friends. Tom and Greg are here. We love them. But we talk because why aren't we spending more time with y'all? That doesn't make sense to me. But you know what? We need to change our schedules to do these new things that have potential to actually take us into the new life that we really want to live. New friends could be a huge part of it. I believe this next quote as much as anything I'll ever say to you. You are the direct result of the thoughts that you think and the people you spend time with and the books that you read. Can I say that again? You are the direct result of the thoughts that you think, the people that you spend time with, and the books that you read. For some of you, the great takeaway from today's talk needs to be, you have many of the wrong people in your life. I don't mean that to be harsh, but I just want you to know, for many, that's what you need to hear. Here's what I've discovered. When you allow the wrong people into your house, 
things come up missing, like joy, peace, love, faith, hope, those things disappear. I really believe you need to, as much as possible, surround yourself with people who are willing and wanting to grow themselves. They are wanting to stretch. They're wanting to be better human beings, learning how to be better human beings. I started thinking this a few years ago. The people that can't grow with you can't go with you. Everybody can't go where the village is going. I wish we all could, but not everybody can. It's going to take people who are willing to grow, people who want to understand deeper, to be, be stimulated in a way that's beyond anything they've known before. Business guru and thought leader, someone I follow a lot, Seth Godin, said this, who you hang out with determines what you dream about and what you collide with. And the collisions and the dreams lead to your changes. And the changes are what you become. Change the outcome by changing your circle. I have never seen anybody have a huge change in their life who stays around the same group of people always. It has, it has always been to me they have decided they're going to change. They change the circle they're running in, and then their life really begins to change. New friends, new books to read, new podcasts to listen to, new opportunities to help the poor and the marginalized, get on a new exercise plan, get a new morning routine, start a new hobby. Maybe you're supposed to go back to school. Listen, you're not too old to go back to school. Go back to school. I had lunch yesterday with a gentleman, fantastic guy, super successful in business. He's, I guess, early 50s. He told me, he said, I think I'm about to go to law school. Good for you. That's fantastic. Go back to school if that's something you want to do. Take a course. Start a new business. Learn something new. Take up yoga. That's been on my list the last five years. I want to take up yoga. I still haven't been to a yoga class, but one day I want to go to a yoga class. Go work in a soup kitchen if you've never done it and you want to try it. Sell most of your stuff and learn how to live a more simplified life. Start picking people up. We have so many people who need rides to church. Start being a, that person that says, hey, tell me who they are, and I'll be the guy on Sundays. I'll be the lady on Sundays who will pick them up and take them home. Find a way to mentor young kids who need mentors who don't come out of strong homes. Let me say it again. I have to be open to new things if I want my life to grow to its full potential. Super important. If I'm going to kick it in 2019, what needs to happen? Well, I need to know that I have to learn to say no to things that make me afraid so I can walk with confidence and courage into my destiny. I have to learn to say no to things that I'm afraid of so I can walk with confidence and courage into my destiny. In the Old Testament, the people following Moses had just wandered around for so long, and then they finally get to the promised land, and they're about to go into the promised land, but they've been told there's all kind of enemies there, and there's going to be all kind of battles, and they don't know what it's going to be about. But Joshua is now leading the charge, and uh, I love this, Joshua 1.9. This is, again, God speaking to the people. Remember that I have commanded you to be determined and confident. Do not be afraid or discouraged. For I, the Lord your God, am with you wherever you go. You don't have to be afraid. You don't have to be afraid. When I speak of courage, I don't want you to think you have to be like a Navy SEAL or an amazing warrior in battle or some expert fighter. I'm not thinking that. I've always liked the story of the man who appeared before St. Peter at the pearly gates. and St. Peter said, have you ever done anything particularly of merit? And uh, the humble man said, well, I, I, I can only think of one thing. He said, uh, on a trip to the Black Hills of South Dakota, I came upon a gang of outlaw bikers, and they were harassing this young woman, and I approached the largest and most heavily tattooed, and I told him, you better leave her alone, and he wouldn't listen to me. So I punched him in the throat, and then I kicked him in the groin, and then I tipped his bike over, and then I ripped his nose ring out, and I threw it on the ground, and I said, I'm not kidding. Leave her alone, or you're going to have to answer to me. St. Peter was so impressed, and he said, my gosh, when did that happen? He said, about a minute and a half ago. Um, <laughs> that's a slow, slow go on that one. 
it's okay to be afraid. You don't have to be some bold, big, braggadocious kind of a guy or gal. But you do have to be willing to face your fears. You have to be willing to say, you know what, I'm going for it. I'm so proud of Rachel. She had never done a solo concert. I remember when the thought of her even speaking in church, she wouldn't do it. I mean, she just wasn't, wouldn't do it. Wouldn't say a family around the tables, family prayer, pass, you know, let somebody else do it. But she faced her fears. She put a band together. She did a show that was unbelievable. But she had to face her fears. What if nobody comes? What if I have to, like, I have to talk between songs? I have to, like, move some. You know, what am I going to do? But she faced her fears, and I think that's an amazing thing. An end-of-life study I read recently revealed that people who took the most risk in their life were more fulfilled as they approached their deaths. I know how it works. You have a dream of a better life, of growing and being and doing more with your life, but then that little voice whispers to you, you can't take this next step. You can't. You can't. You've screwed up too badly. You've wasted too much time. You've proven yourself not worthy. But can I tell you something? You can do it. You can do it. That's just a crazy voice in your head. You can do it. Nothing you have done has canceled your destiny. You can still become who God has created you to be. I remember years when I just floundered around because I thought I had messed up my destiny so badly. All the while... God was just wanting me to get with it. Get back in the game, Ray. Get back in the game. Get off the sofa. Quit crying. Quit pouting. Get back in the game. I'm so glad. I have to learn to say no to fear so I can walk with confidence and courage into my destiny. Well, if I'm going to kick it in 2019, another thing that needs to happen, anything that doesn't serve you on your journey has to be left behind and replaced with things necessary to get you where you want to go. Anything that doesn't serve you on your journey has to be left behind and replaced with things necessary to get you where you want to go. In other words, you can't take everything in your life right now into the beautiful future that God has for you. There are some things that you just have to leave behind. Uh, I hope everybody saw the little cards that were sitting on the chairs when you came in. If you'll just make sure you have one. And then I think on the back of the chairs, there are pins. But this next minute, few minutes are real important. I want you to take a card in your hand, make sure you have something to write with, and I want you to think about what are some things you need to leave behind. What are some things that really, 2018, it's done. You need to just leave it behind. Now, I want to be honest with you and let you know, when you let go and leave some things behind, it creates space. And if you don't put something good in that space that you've just emptied, what you emptied will come back. So let me let me suggest some examples. Maybe you can treat your card like this, and I want you to write both the thing that you're wanting to get rid of and the thing you want to replace with it. Uh, this would be something maybe you'd want to release, holding on to my failures. Maybe somebody's here and they're saying, I have been holding on to my failures, and I know that is preventing me from what I need to be, so I need 2018 to be the last year that that happens. I need to release those things. Well, you need to replace it with something else. Maybe you would say something like this, forgiving myself and moving forward. I need to learn to forgive myself and I need to move forward. Or maybe you would say this, I need to release my judging people. I need to release that. I'm judging people and it's wrong. Maybe you would put it in its place. I need to learn to forgive or I need to learn to love people. I need to learn to love people. Maybe you would say this, being a spectator in life. I'm tired of sitting on the sidelines and being a spectator. Maybe you would put in its place becoming a full participant in life. Maybe this, I'm tired of holding grudges. I remember the day that I released some grudges and what a wonderful time that was. What you would put in its place is genuine forgiveness. Maybe you'd say, hey, I've got some escapist behaviors. I've got some escapist behaviors that are hurting me. Maybe what you'd put in this place is accept my current situation straight up. Just handle it. Maybe this is you. This has been me. I've had a scarcity mindset, always thinking there's not going to be enough. I want to replace that with, a, with an abundance mindset. Uh, there's enough. There's enough. Maybe you want to replace being selfish with learning how to open your hands to give. 
Maybe you want to replace procrastination with doing necessary things right now. Maybe you want to uh, release sleepwalking through your life with being present in your life right now. Or envy, you want contentment. Fear, you want faith. Lying to yourself, becoming a real truth teller. Anger, maybe you want to release it and say, I've been, I'm a jerk. I'm an angry jerk. Maybe you need to release that and learn to practice self-control. Maybe overspending. Maybe you need to practice being wise with money. Maybe taking things for granted is something you need to release. And you need to replace it with learning to be grateful in all things. When you write those down, write this couple down if you want to, as many as you'd like. I want you just to fold them because in just a minute I'm going to invite you all up to what is commonly called a burning bowl. And I want you to just put it in the burning bowl. Across all religious traditions, fire is a powerful symbol of wisdom, knowledge, passion, purification, transformation, divinity, and light. Fire inflames, it consumes, It warms, it illuminates, it inspires, and it serves as a catalyst for change. What I'm going to ask you to do is, as you think about these things in just a moment, I'm going to ask you to come, and I'm going to ask you just in your time, come and just put it in the the fire. Just put it in the fire. And then I'm going to ask you if you would like to just keep on walking and come over here and partake in communion. Because we believe Jesus has invited all of us to his table. And he has said to all of us, the bread and the wine are symbols of my body and blood that were given for you to demonstrate God's great love for you. So you take that bread and you think about the fact that you are so loved And you eat that bread and you take the little juice and you drink that juice and you just remember that God loves you and God is wanting to fill you. Now, we're going to start doing communion like this every week. And we're going to tell you every week, don't worry about it being neat over here and orderly over here. You might see somebody that you haven't seen and you just want to put your arms around them and embrace them. Listen, this is going to be family time. This is like family table except it's going to be you coming and walking up to a communion table. So don't worry about lines. I mean, don't push people out of the way. Don't do anything like that. But you just go and, and, and make it special for you. But if you want to hug somebody's neck over here, um, just know this is going to be a beautiful thing. I'm going to ask the booth to play the soft music. And uh, this is just going to be something we're going to do together. And I'm going to come down. And, um, I appreciate Jane set all this up yesterday, and I appreciate that so much. And... Uh, You won't have to use this, I don't think. You'll just put it here. The best laid plans always work. Hold on. As you're ready, you come, okay? I could sing of your love forever. I could sing of your love forever. I could sing of your love forever. Over the mountains and the sea, your river runs with love for me. And I will open up my heart. Let the healer set me free. I'm happy to be in the truth. And I will daily lift my hands. For I will always sing of when your love came down. I could sing of your love forever. I could sing of your love forever. I could sing of your love. Forever, I could sing of your love forever. Over the mountains 
rivers and the sea. Your river runs with love for me, and I will open up my heart and let the healer set me free. I'm happy to be in the truth, and I will daily lift my hands, for I will always sing. When your love came down, I could sing of your love forever. 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 And I could sing of your love forever. I could sing of your love forever. I could sing of your love.